So social media has has been a, an amazing um, tool in public relations uh, in our ability to reach and establish relationships with people. It's it's incredibly personalized and feels very um, engaged and feels very uh, connection oriented with our audience. And things. So it's, it's really been an incredible tool. And uh, and so using that and learning how to master that for public relations is critical. It's also a little dangerous, <laughs> you know, as we know, uh, social media can be a little bit of a danger zone. Just ask Adidas, who got a lot of flack online when they sent out this email in 2017 saying, congrats, you survived the Boston Marathon. This, of course, was four years after the Boston Marathon bombing that killed several people in 2013, killed and, and seriously injured uh, more people. Um, people went nuts about this. They sent this email saying, congrats, you survived the Boston Marathon. They took a real beating on social media, uh, as did Chase when they posted this. Uh, why is my bank account so low and so forth? They, you know, and the bank account seriously. For, they were trying to motivate people to save and to, uh, to, to, to spend less, to be a little more thrifty. But they really took a beating on this from people who said, look, this is, uh, the reason that people don't have money is not that they're not saving enough. It's that, that the economy is terrible and we're struggling to, to you know, make ends meet on the salary that we have and so forth. So, I mean... Social media can be a danger zone. So we really need to think a lot about, as public relations people, how we can use effectively the, the tools of social media and specifically how we can write well um, for social media and use that as a tool for public relations. So um, the very first thing we need to answer regarding anything related to social media with public relations is first to post or not to post, right? That is the question. And so we need to run through a series of, of, of checks and questions to ask ourselves whether or not we should be posting or not in the first place. Um, first, the first question we need to ask is, what is my message goal? Anytime we post again, for public relations purposes, thinking about as an organization or as a campaign or whatever, we ought to have a purpose, a goal, an intention, something that we're trying to accomplish with that post. Right. Uh, and so we need to know what is my message goal, because then we can craft it for uh, the variety of factors that we need to consider. But first, we have to know what are we hoping to accomplish with this? What are we hoping to get out of this? Right. Next, we need to ask, who's my target audience? That's going to really influence how we write things and how we how we frame things, um, what we talk about and what tone we use and so forth about, you know, who are we trying to reach with this? Because uh, that requires a different, uh, uh, you know, could be a different language if we're trying to attract baby boomers as opposed to to millennials or or whatever it is, you know. And so um, we need to think, who am I trying to reach with this? I have a goal in mind. Who is it that I'm trying to reach with this to accomplish that goal? Right? Next, we need to ask, does this fit the organizational strategies for social media use? Your entire organization really needs to be on the same page. With all this, and we need to be, we as in public relations folks, need to be in sync with our organizational strategies. If our organization is, you know, very traditional, very, um, very, uh, you know, kind of old fashioned and, and kind of stodgy, then, then our public relations social media posts should probably not be really flashy and sarcastic and kind of nasty and overly political or whatever. And, and vice versa. If we're really a contemporary hip company, we don't want to be too old fashioned in, in our uh, social media use. So we really need to make sure that our social media use fits in with the overall organizational structure and that everybody's on the same page with how we're going about this, right? So um, when we think about organizational strategies for social media specifically, um, organizational strategies are determined by the organization's tolerance for uncertain outcomes and the level of results sought. Okay. So this this uh, study by Wilson, article by Wilson et al. here that you see, uh, identified this as, as you know, organizational strategies for, for social media really need to be determined by the organization's tolerance for both uncertain outcomes and then the levels of results sought, right? Because it's, 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 it's a it kind of, so to speak, the yin and yang, the balance between these things. Um, and it kind of exists on these two axes, right? So uh, you have this uncertainty of outcomes and level of results sought. And you have organizations that are at different points on the scale. So some are what uh, the study by Wilson et al. called uh, predictive practitioners, right? If you're a predictive pra practitioner, then you take a fairly cautious approach. You have very, a fairly low 
um, tolerance of, of uncertainty of outcomes. You don't like uncertainty. You're not willing to sacrifice uh, uncertainty. Um, and so you're not really reaching for a lot of uh, results to be, to be uh, a lot of things to be accomplished through social media. So you're taking a very cautious approach, um, a very limited interaction in social media with your, with your publics. Um, and it really can restricts control to a very small number of people who are able to post and able to, to really determine what goes out over these social media channels. So predictive practitioners are again, very conservative, very cautious in the way that they approach these things because they're not willing to risk the uncertainty of outcomes. And as a result, they're, they're, they're willing to accept that they're going to have a lower level of results as a result of that. Okay. Um, but next you then have the creative experimenter, right? This is a little more brave. These are, these are organizations that are going to test, they're, they're going to float like test balloons, right? And they're going to look for feedback. They may throw out ideas. Hey, what if we did this? What would, what would, what would you, our customers think about if we did this? We're not going to necessarily, right? We just wondering what you would think, you know, if I, if I have a restaurant, especially like a small business or something like a small restaurant of my own, I might say, hey, what would you guys think if I had uh, taco flavored ice cream? If I created a taco flavored ice cream, that'd be a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, not that I'm doing it, but uh, you know, they might flight float those like test balloons, right? We would call them. So the goal here is just listening and learning. It's not overly ambitious. Um, they're willing to take a little bit of flack when I hear about how terrible my idea for taco flavored ice cream is. I, I'm willing to take that, that uncertainty of those outcomes um, and get some results though. I'm getting a little bit of results, a little bit of feedback to help me guide decisions and, and understand my public's a little more what they're, what they're interested in. So you have the creative experimenter. Uh, next, you have the social media champion. Right? A social media champion is an organization that's really pretty active in social media. They have a designated team that uses that technology toward a specific purpose. So their, their, their social media goals are pretty focused. They really want some results from that, and they're willing to accept the uh, uncertainty of outcomes. But they have a, a pretty... Um, uh, a pretty um, narrowly designed team. They have a, a specific group of people who are going to do that. And it is used across various departments and, and functions though. So it, that team is going to involve people from different departments and different functions. And it's not just going to be two or three people. It's going to be people from different areas, but still a designated team that's going to identify, yes, this is appropriate for us or not appropriate for us. And they're going to, they're going to be a little more aggressive in using social media to reach their publics and, and uh, make their case there. So they, they put themselves out there a little more. They're willing to accept the uncertainty of those outcomes and take the, take what comes and maybe some heat and maybe some positive stuff in exchange for seeing maybe some uh, additional results then a higher level of results. Then finally you have what we call the social media transformer, social media transformer. These are people that really put it on the line out there and they really are pushing the boundaries in social media, how it's used and things. And they can see some really phenomenal results as a result, you know, that come from that. But they also are really putting it on the line, risking themselves, risking embarrassment, risking some things or taking chances there. So these projects that they're doing in social media with their social media uh, access, and they're using it uh, for projects that are broad in scope and that involve multiple departments. Um, and but there's a great deal of, of planning and how they're going to leverage these socials to, to influence their strategy and their brand and their culture. And it really is a, a very integrated part of their business decisions, their organizational decisions. It's, it's really um, sort of an organic part of how they make decisions. It's And, and they think about these things and how they're going to, how they're going to approach this in social media and how it's going to be um, received there and so forth. So uh, social media transformers are really highly active and, and uh, they, they have the higher uncertainty of outcomes, but they also tend to see bigger rewards. Uh, it could be bigger losses too, but, uh, but, but they tend to see the bigger rewards because they take bigger swings. So you have to have to though, be in line with your organizational strategy overall for social media. What's your organ? How's your organization feel about this? You can't be the, the lone voice in the wilderness saying, Hey, I'm going to go out here and do this, all this active stuff on social media. If you work in an organization or if you, you're part of an organization that is a predictive practitioner and really is just like really not interested in, in doing that, you've got to be in line with the overall organizational strategy for social media. That's really important. So what about when we go about creating content for social media? What are some things we need to think about and be aware of? Well, first of all, we have to be prepared to engage, you know, social media, the beauty of social media, and also the, 
the one of the more challenging aspects of social media is that it is a two way street, right? So we've got to be willing to get into those comments and read them and, and, and use that material and, and use that and grow from those things. So we've got to be prepared to engage. We've got to be committed to putting in the time and the energy and the effort to engaging, not just with the negative comments, but the positive ones as well. And, and how can we grow from these things and how can we use that? If, so if you're not willing to engage and if you're seeing it as a one way street, then you need to think about your social media strategy and whether or not it's even worth it for you, for your organization. Uh, because if you're going to use it and have it be effective for you, you really need to take the time to be engaged and actively engaged. You have to be consistent in the way that you use social media. And this is where understanding your organizational strategy and having a strategy for social media specifically comes into play. You can't be um, a really staunchy organization, you know, stodgy organization, really, really like conservative and things. And, uh, and then all of a sudden start being sarcastic, you know, for, for a day or two, and then go back to being really conservative. You gotta be consistent all the way through. Uh, you gotta use your social media accounts consistently, have a strategy in mind and stick to it. I mean, obviously you need to, to leave room to change things if it's not working, but you know, we've got it. We've got to give it some time, got to stick with things. We can't just be all over the place, giving people whiplash and how we use our accounts. Right. So for example, Coke says their, their, their mission then here is spreading optimism one bottle at a time, uh, or maybe two bottles to share. If I had two bottles, I would drink them both. I have to tell you, I love Coke. So, um, but, and they, they try and be consistent with that. So if, if you if your goal is spread optimism, then Coke's not going to be putting out a lot of tweets that say, oh, this person's a jerk or this is horrible and all they're going to, they're going to use their social media posts to share optimistic ideas and to, to kind of try and spread happiness then. Right. So they're going to, they would need to be consistent. Organizations need to be consistent in the way that they use their social media. We need to be concise, keep it simple, keep it straightforward. Um, people aren't going to spend, you know, it's not a book on social media. It's intentionally short. So you need to be concise. You need to use language wisely and reach people with your core message as, as, as concisely as possible. So when you're creating content for social media, just be aware of that, that it needs to be, um, to, to be really concise. Also, it needs to be clear, but it needs to be concise. We need to keep it simple. Um, I, you know, love Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and I think he has some real wisdom to share in social media. He said, social media to me is like a marriage. You have to foster it and take care of it and commit to it. And you have to understand your partner. I think all of those are excellent points. The wisdom of The Rock, of course, and not surprising that it would come from him, right? So, uh, but it is, it's, you, you really do have to care for your social media account. If you're going to, you really leverage it to the maximum and get the most use out of it. You have to take care of it. You have to foster it. You have to, and you have to understand who's on the other end. Who are you trying to reach with this? What is your purpose? What are you trying to get out of it? What are they trying to get out of it? And, and how can you work together to get there? Right. It's, it's, it's very much like a marriage. It's really an interesting analogy brought to us by the, again, the wisdom of the rock. Never underestimate the wisdom of the rock. Hopefully this has been helpful and, and briefly helping you understand the role of social media and how it can be used in, in public relations and, and some considerations that we need to have when we're writing for social media, um, for public relations specifically. If you have questions about any of this, about how to use social media for public relations and things, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you there. Love to hear your thoughts there as well in the comments. Um, but, uh, but I hope that, uh, that this has been helpful for you and that you are feeling a little more prepared now as you engage in social media for the purpose of public relations.